Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with the friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Can People of Opposite Gender Be Friends? Very interesting topics by topic by Dr. Zaki Naik. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The next question is asked by Abdullah Ammar from Afghanistan. I have recently got admission at the university and as it's a co-educational system, I have developed relationships and started talking with some of my female classmates through WhatsApp and Messenger. Even though we consider each other as brother and sister relationship, but I found that this is leading me astray from the straight path. Like I cannot pray at times right now and I cannot concentrate in my Salah and many more things. Can you please tell me if it's permissible what I'm doing is right? And if it's not permissible, please give me an advice how can I get myself out of this situation? It's not only me who is going through these situations, but there are many Muslims whose fate is same as mine. There is another question on the same topic asked by Asad Nadim on the YouTube. Can people of opposite gender be friends? The question posed by Abdullah Ammar from Afghanistan is a very common question. And it's common today that people go to co-educational schools co-educational universities and it's very common that when they go there they have friends of opposite sex as the question posed that can you have friends of the opposite gender and they get involved and it leads them away from the teachings of Islam. As far as having friends of the opposite gender is concerned what do you mean by the word friend is important. If you're talking about acquaintances having of opposite gender no problem having acquaintances as long as you do not break any of the teachings of the Quran and Sahih Hadith. As long as you do not break any of the ruling of the Sharia, you can have acquaintances of opposite sex. And we'll come to it, inshallah, shortly. Regarding saying that I consider them to be my sister and brother, you have to understand what do you mean by brother and sister. If you're talking about brother and sister in humanity, no problem. If you're talking about brother and sister in faith, no problem. But this brother and sister is not the same as brother and sister of blood. This is totally nonsense. You know, like we have in India, a girl ties the rakhi to the boy. She is my rakhi sister. There's no rakhi sister in Islam. Sister in humanity, okay, like I say, sister is asked a good question. Sister in faith, no problem. But all these sisters of humanity and faith, you have to do full and total hijab with them. Only with your blood sister, where your parents are common, whether both parents or one parent, then the hijab is relaxed. Even with your cousin, you have to maintain your full hijab. The problem is that we see in the Western countries, it's very common that there's intermingling of sexes. And many of the Muslim countries, this is becoming common in them too. Where you have co-educational schools, you have co-educational universities, and there, you have friends and you keep on chatting and you keep on speaking things which are not required. If you speak with an opposite sex things which are required as an emergency, no problem. But you cannot do chatting like how you do with the same sex. Like a boy has a boyfriend, no problem. You can chat, you can laugh, you can joke. But you cannot do the same thing with an opposite sex who is a nahmehram. It's not permitted in Islam. What we find, and it's very clearly mentioned, as far as the hijab is concerned, before talking about the hijab for the woman, hijab for the woman is given in the Quran that a Muslim should be properly covered and I discussed that in my previous session and also in my lectures that complete body should be covered, the only part can be seen are the face and the hands up with the wrist, etc. But this is only the hijab of the clothes. The complete hijab, besides the hijab of the clothes, is the hijab of way a lady walks, the way a lady talks, the way a lady thinks, the way a lady sees. Before talking about the hijab of the female, the woman in the Quran, Allah talks about the hijab of the men. In Surah Noor, chapter number 24, verse number 30, 
where Allah SWT says, Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. That means whenever a male looks at a female, any brazen thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. There was once a boy staring at a girl for a long time. So I told him, brother, what are you doing? It's not allowed in Islam. He told me that a prophet said, the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited, I have not completed half my glance. What did the prophet mean when he said that the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited? What it means that if you accidentally look at a woman, do not look at her again to feast on her beauty. That does not mean you can look at a woman for 10 minutes without blinking and saying that I have not completed my glance. So maintaining the hijab is very important. Therefore, it is not advisable for taking education in a co-educational university. And if you have to take education, if there is no other option, then you have to maintain your hijab. When you are speaking with the opposite sex, you should lower your game. You cannot stare at the woman or look into her eyes and talk. In the western country, if you do not look into the eyes and speak, it is also like an insult. So what we find that even the Muslims, when they go to western countries, they do not follow this hijab. When I visited Islamic organizations in western countries, I find that Muslim ladies and gents, sisters and brothers, they are freely intermingling, they are freely talking. They may be wearing the hijab, they may be covered, the hair is covered, but that is a physical hijab, only of the clothes. They are laughing, they are joking. In some of the western countries, I found a man and a woman sitting alone in a small room and chatting. A Muslim woman doing dawah to a non-Muslim boy in a closed room, it's not allowed. Our beloved Prophet said that if two Namerama are alone in a room, the third person is a devil. It's not allowed that you can be in a closed room, a man and a woman. In some organization, I've gone and seen that the head of the organization has a lady secretary. How can you have a lady secretary? Do you think all the Muslim men in that country are not capable? Or aren't they qualified? I cannot understand that how can a practicing Muslim have a lady secretary? How can they maintain the hijab? If the secretary comes in the room, in your room and no one else is there, it's not permitted. It is very common, unfortunate. They are preaching Islam and they are not practicing Islam. So if you break the hijab, there are high chances what the brother has asked Ammar will happen. Your focus will go away from education, you will start thinking other things, as though your brother, sister for namesake, but then love affair starts and you deviate from the Sharia and you start doing un-Islamic things. Therefore, best is to educate yourself in a single sex university. And there was a survey done in UK that the schools which were single sex had better performance and single sex universities as compared to universities which were coed. And that's the same thing in India also. If it's a single sex education, the performance is better because many a time in a co-education, each sex is trying to impress the other sex. So if a teacher is teaching, the boy is trying to impress the girl in his class rather than paying attention on the subject. This is very common. So single sex education is better. If there is no other opportunity and if you are doing higher education, if you have to go to a co-ed education, see to it to maintain your hijab. I am not talking only about universities, even if you go in office places, your hijab should be maintained. It is not that you are prohibited to speak with the opposite sex, no. But when you speak, you have to be careful. There is a verse revealed in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 32, which is addressed to the wives of the Prophet, to the Ummu Hatul Mu'mineen. It says that, O wives of the Prophet, be not too complacent in your voice, lest in whose heart is a disease, he will have desires. Imagine the wives of the Prophet. They are called as Ummuhatul Mu'mineen. It is not permitted for anyone else to marry the wives of the Prophet even after the Prophet has died. The Quran is revealing a verse for the wives of the Prophet. Be not too complacent in your voice, lest in whose heart is a disease, he may have some desires. Imagine the Sahabas who are the highest level among the Muslim Ummah. The Prophet said, the best generation was the Sahaba. There is no human being today on the face of the earth which is anywhere close to the Sahaba. There is no woman who is anywhere close to the Muatul Mu'mineen. Yet Allah says to the Muatul Mu'mineen, do not be complacent in your voice. 
Why? So that in whose heart is the disease, can the sabbath have a disease in the heart? You cannot think of it. Yet, for safety, as a precaution, Allah revealed this verse. And today we find the women in the offices, in Muslim organizations, in Muslim companies, they are talking to each other, they are laughing, leave aside complacent, they are joking. What they think, only wearing the scarf, hijab is done, they are totally wrong. And unfortunately, this Western culture is even percolating into the Muslim countries. Nowadays, we find Muslim countries also. Muslim men and women, they freely talk, they freely mix. If you require, if there is a requirement, you have to talk, then you can talk. But when you talk, don't look eye to eye. Lower your gaze. How many Muslims do you find today in the world when they speak to a Namaram lady that they lower their gaze? Very few. In the Western country, hardly. You will be counted like a joker. But believe me, Alhamdulillah, a strong Muslim will follow this. And if this is done, all these things will not happen. As the question was asked, my mind is diverting, I cannot offer salah, but natural. And today we find the dressing also is not as per the Sharia. You have non-Muslim ladies not dressing up properly. Even the Muslim ladies, they may be Muslim, they may not be dressing up properly. More of the body is exposed than covered. So all these things, you have to maintain the hijab. If you maintain the hijab, the men maintaining their hijab, that whenever they look at a woman, they should lower their gaze and see to it that they also not too friendly, only talk when it's required, when there is a requirement, not unnecessary, joking, etc. can be done with the same sex, but not with the opposite sex. Hope that answers the question. Very interesting video. I mean, if you feel like being tempted and can't handle the situation that comes from a core school thing, then move to something where it's just men or women to prevent yourself from sinning. It's really up to us to make that choice. Sometimes we've got the will, but we're just so weak that we're tempted to do the wrongest thing in this world. There is no shame in transferring to a single sex school. There is nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, you're just trying to practice your beliefs, your religion, and everything else in peace. And that should be something that should be put at the forefront of trying to maybe impress someone. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.